Hello there, how's it going? You all right? Well, today I'm going to talk a bit about working in the acting industry. Uh, it's a very glamorous job, or it's depicted as a very glamorous job. Uh, I'll try and give you some of the realities of it as well. Um, it's one of those jobs that everybody thinks they can do. Um, it takes a lot of commitment and a lot of homework and a lot of training uh, if you're serious about it and if you want to make a career out of it. Um, my own path, shall we say, was, as they say in Dublin, it's far from the theatre or acting I was raised, yeah? In that I started life as a telegram boy when I was 16 and then went on to become, become a postman when I was 18. So I was walking the streets for a living for about 10 years. And then when I was about 17 or 17, 18, I started to do some amateur dramatics. So I recommend that the people who are, might be a bit kind of ambiguous or a bit kind of unsure about should they give up their day job and go straight into acting or acting training. I would say try out your local amateur group and see do you like it? Because it doesn't suit everybody. Um, as the old saying goes, many are called but few are chosen. So we are constantly kind of uh, testing ourselves uh, in the field of acting. So to start off, I recommend certainly your local drama group or uh, amateur musical society, and that will give you a flavour of what's required. Okay. And then it may come a time, like myself, where you're doing that, and then it becomes like an obsession. Uh, the expression is you get bitten by the bug, and you have to act. So my own path was that I, I had a nice job, and I resigned from it. And I got a chance. Now, before I did resign, may I add, I took a year's leave of absence, where I went away for a year and I worked in a theatre in Vienna, in Austria, which was an English-speaking theatre, and um, sold the coffee, hung up the coats, made the sets, did sound, did lights, did acting. It was seven days a week. So what I'm saying to you is, that was the final kind of test I put myself through to see whether I could make a go at this. Could I would I be bored halfway through or would I be kind of whatever. So once I put myself away for the year, it was a great inspiration for me to continue. So I ended up resigning from my job as a postman and going full time as an actor. And even then, I mean, I had some training at the time. This was like late 70s, early 80s. And the training opportunities in Dublin at the time were few and far between. There was a place called the Brendan Smith Academy, which you paid uh, a lot of money at the time, and you did, I think it was a year-long course. And then there was a place called uh, Betty Ann Norton, who was more speech and drama. So there were the two real opportunities. And then I discovered this place called the Focus Theatre, uh, which was run by Deidre O'Connell and um, it dealt with the Stanislavski system. And that was once a week kind of training. Uh, and out of that then I started to get parts then in the evening with that. So, today, looking at Dublin, looking at the acting industry, there's a lot more happening now than there was then. Uh, in the old days, as I say, there was maybe two or three agents who, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, an agent is a person who you employ um, to get you work, to find you jobs. And for every job you get, they get 10% of your wages. And that's fair enough. So it's up to them. They're motivated to get you work so they get that cut. Nowadays, there is a lot more agents around who will get work for you, but it comes with a proviso. They are not going to buy, the old expression again, a pig in a poke. 
if they don't know you from a hole in the wall, why, how are they going to sell you? If they don't know what training you've done, that have you trained? They want to see that you have something that's sellable, which is a talent, be it for singing, dancing, acting, whatever. If you have a face that looks commercial, if you have a face that's good for tough guys, or romantic leads, or juvenile leads, or whatever, if you have something to sell, they will take you on. Because they may already have somebody in that range, so they might not need anybody. If they're looking for a guy in 50s, they might have two people in their 50s on the books who are doing quite well, so they won't need anyone else. Because there's no point in an agent having hundreds of people on their books and there's no work for them. And then the actors get annoyed and they get kind of, why am I getting work, not getting work? Why am I not getting seen for movies and stuff, you know? So that's why they, they're very selective in the people that they pick, okay? So, the agent is very popular, but you also need then a showreel, ideally, to present yourself. Ideally, it's great to see you. If you're on stage, invite the people to come and see you on stage. At least they see how you look on stage, and can you act? The bottom line, okay? So, <clears throat> if you can get a, an agent to come along, you have to get this. I'm I watching Mary Curran's um, talk earlier on and the idea of sending out your CV, knocking on doors, without being a nuisance or a stalker. It's just letting people know that you exist, and here I am. People come out of training schools, young people mostly, and they feel, that's it now, everyone knows that I'm finished training school, so they've got to come knocking on my door. No, they don't know you. They haven't seen you. So you have to be seen. So that's where you get a relationship with the agents to come and see you. And that can take a couple of years before you get picked or you're ready or they feel you're ready. Another way of getting yourself out there is to have a showreel. Now a showreel is where you take clips from films that you've done or monologues that you've done and you present them so they can show you or you can show them how you look on camera. Now some people on the street can be very basic, grand, but put them in front of a camera and something magic happens. Okay? Marilyn Monroe, any of these heads, there's something just flicks. All right, light goes on. So, a showreel, how do you get a showreel? Either by creating it yourself, which can be a bit kind of cheap and nasty or cheap and cheerful, or you can go to student movies and stu uh, student filmmakers and make student films. And they can, they're well lit, there's good sound on them and hopefully good parts where you can show yourself in front of a camera and that you're not a nervous wreck and that you're not sweating because you're so freaked out kind of thing and that you're quite relaxed in front of the camera. So it's like a catch-22 situation all the time. You have to keep putting yourself out there to try to be seen in the hope that you'll get picked up by an agent who will get you work. So that's the cycle because the employers any of the theatre companies, the Abbey, the film companies, go to the agents first and they look for actors of a certain age, of a certain type and of a, a certain ethnic group. So that's where that happens. So again, getting on the books of an agent is very important. You can do it yourself. You can hustle the, fill, the, the directors and you can hustle the companies. You can bang your head against the wall. Unless you have a relationship with them, it's very hard to actually make that connection. And then it comes down to negotiating money and all that kind of stuff. And like a lot of things nowadays, of course, they want you to do it for nothing. So you have to make that call yourself. Starting off, I think it's fine. And you will do stuff so that you will get a show reel out of it or a few clips that might be of use. And the same with theatre as well you will start off doing a share show. So say I was doing my show here today, a couple of us are doing our show here today, and this is the audience. And you guys have paid 10 euro in, okay? So many we've got two, four, six, eight, ten, say, say 40 people. So there's 400 quid came in the door, okay? So we have to pay for posters. The sale man, he'll probably have to get paid as well. But he wouldn't do it for a share, so we give him a share, uh, a few more, he'll do it for nothing. And, uh, and then what's left then is divided among the cast. So if there's six people on the stage, 
you take whatever's left, 300 quid, divide it by six, and you get 50 quid. That could be for your day. Could be for your week. Okay? I knew a theatre company once, they didn't make a penny because all of it went on expenses. And they got paid in bally gown water because they sponsored the show and it creates a bit left and they actually gave all the actors bally gown water to take home. So as I say, there is that glamorous side of the business, but there's also that, you've heard all these stories of stars starting out, yeah, and trying to make a go of it in the business. And you're constantly at odds with yourself because when you don't get work, your confidence starts to go and you start to question yourself and you start to say, oh my God, I must be terrible because he got the part, what well, I could do, I'm better than him or maybe they think I'm not as, whatever. There's all these little mind games going on. So what I love about the job is that you are, it's up to yourself. It's very much up to you to train, keep training, keep going to classes, keep it, and that gets you into the grapevine. And that gets you kind of ready for work. Um, I work myself in the college in Sally Noggin, you've probably seen there, on the performing arts course. Now this is a fantastic course because it deals with all elements of training. It's a sampler, may I add, it's a quite a good level five course. So you get all the levels of training that you would get in a school, uh, like stage management, voice, singing, if you can sing and act, you have more possibilities of working. If you can dance, you're a triple threat. So you can do pantomimes at Christmas, do you understand? So you're constantly trying to add to your skill base so that your versatility is not just in one thing. You're not just a film actor. In America, you can be just a TV actor, you can be a stage actor, you can be a commercial actor. And that's great, there's enough business over there that you can specialize in that. Here, I just finished a radio play there a couple of weeks ago. I'm writing a play at the moment. I'm teaching. I was on Christmas kids show. You understand? You're constantly hopping around from fear, and, and you're not in any position to say no. It's all part of your training. You're building up your CV, and it's work, and you're getting paid, which is a bonus. Not all the time, but you get paid. But it might be work worth it for a, a contact or a connection that may lead to work later on. I'm meeting people in the industry now that I know 40 years that we started off training together. Some of them are directors now so they would give you a call. So those connections and those meetings that you have years can, can come to fruition many years later, 30, 40 years later. I say to my kids who want to go into the business as well, be nice to everyone, okay? Dublin is too small. If you're being a prima donna <laughs> on a small little movie that's been made by a student who's financing it himself or herself, the word gets out that you're trouble, that you're, you know, because time is money in the industry, especially on film. The longer it takes to make a film, it's, it's like a, a taximeter. It just keeps going up all the time. So they haven't got time. It's like the TV thing, the Fair City thing. You're churning out four episodes a week, which is quite a lot. That's two hours of television. There's an average of maybe 20 scenes per episode. So there's 80 scenes a week being shot in like five days. If there's any messing on that, if somebody is, as I say, queening it or whatever, they're gone. It's like a big machine. It just has to do this every week. And if there's anybody messing, turning up late, the discipline required on a TV show like that, and then learning lines. People say, I'll make up my own lines. No, especially on TV in particular, whatever about stage, on, on TV in particular, it's very, very strict because the camera is cutting on the cue on the line. The, the scripts are written on a word count. So it has to be, I think it's 27 minutes for a TV half hour. The rest is commercials for three minutes. So if you have a problem remembering lines, maybe acting wouldn't suit you. But again, it becomes with training. At the moment, there are so many things going on with phones and computers and Facebook, and everything is very much instant. 
and people think as well that to become an actor, it's like add water and stir. Bang, you're an actor. You watch the X Factor, you see these people coming from nowhere and becoming, and a lot of the kids I work with have that impression that it's simply, oh, I will be discovered, I will be found, they will know that I'm talented, they will know, and that will happen. Think about it. There's very few make that transition to a full-time career afterwards. If they have been ripped off in the meantime by Simon Cowell and the rest of the gang as far as management and stuff. So what I'm saying is there is no easy path per se. There's maybe one actor per generation that gets to make that breakthrough from Ireland. Say Brendan Gleeson, Liam Cunningham. You know what I mean? There's very few, one per generation, make it. So if you're going in, you know, to say you've got to be working, you know, 365 days a year, that's impossible. 90% uh, of actors are unemployed 90% of the time. I know this because I, I worked, I was on the equity executive. So the work is very scarce on the ground. There was a big movie industry here years ago when there was tax breaks. It's not the same. You have films coming in now, like, and they would use a lot of foreign actors. English and American to take the lead parts. So the danger is that Irish actors, as I call them, pay Paddy Policeman or Paddy Barman or Paddy, do you understand? It's a small part. So just be aware of that as well. To get a starring role in an Irish movie is quite a tough thing. And the starring role is what will sell you if it gets a shown in America or England, okay? But just get back to the training because I find that the training is very important because that's the foundation stone and you never stop learning. There was an acting teacher, a Polish acting teacher called Grotowski and he reckoned that actors should retrain every nine years. That goes with the changes in your body, in your voice, in your look over the aging process. So every nine years retrain the muscles for movement and dance and vocal stuff. So even though you do pay Say a full-time course in the Gaiety School can be three, four grand a year. You do two years, three years of that. That's quite a lot. I do some work in the Gaiety School in TV and film acting, and it's a great course, but it's expensive. So just be aware of that as well, that if you're going for the full-time acting training, that it will cost you, okay? Now, the Lear Academy is very good, but they have a very limited kind of take, uptake as far as taking people in. Again, it's very expensive. But if this is what you want, if this is what you feel is your calling in life, I call it a vocation, which is normally used with religious experiences. But I find that acting, or the arts in general, is a vocation. Don't waste your time. There's too much heartache, there's too much disappointment if you're not serious about it. Because if you're not serious about it, there's a hundred people here in Dublin that are probably ten times more serious than you, and they'll get the work. In America, there's probably five thousand people more serious. In London, there's probably a thousand people more serious than you are. So what I'm saying to you is, don't waste your time, don't waste your money. If you feel your heart is not in it, start off small with an amateur group that won't cost you anything, and try and go that way. The course in the Sally Noggin is a great sampler because you have young people who have a bit of experience, have just done their leaving cert, say, and they're looking to do performing arts. So they didn't get what they want and they want to have a go at something in this year gap. They want to take a year out. So the performing arts course gives them the sampler of training, of movement, of voice. Then they get performance experience as well in-house, in the school and then they do a show then, they come up to Dublin then from Sally Noggin and the last show was The Importance of Being Earnest by Oscar Wilde. So it's quite a high level and that's our end of year show. And then I work stuff as well with TV and film stuff as far as um, scene work, monologues and commercials. Commercials is another thing, if you have a good voice there's also possibility of radio work yeah, on the commercials. Um, although some of you hear some of the radio commercials and you can cringe a little bit because <laughs> some of those are terrible. But it is an art form in itself, and if you find that that's your calling, that's another way of doing it. Again, you need a, a sample tape you have to make up, 
to present to the agents, against all agents, who look after these accounts for the companies, and they'll pick out their people for that. Okay? Um, am I forgetting anything else? It is one of the most fulfilling businesses um, as far as your own self-worth. You're constantly being challenged. You can never phone it in, as they call it. You can never just go through the motions because you, the work just dries up if you do. So you're constantly, you're only as good as your last show. So what I'm saying to you is, again, it's that commitment to it. And even when you get old and you think, well, I've done this and I've won this and I've done that, it never ends. You're constantly being appraised on your look, especially if you're a lady. I always find for the women it's so much tougher, you know, because there's, there's so many terms and conditions that apply to actresses that don't apply to men. And I, I think that's, I always say, especially for the actresses, that make sure this is what you want, because there's other ways you can work, but if this is for you, go for it. But it's tough, tougher. It's never easy, okay? So I can take a few uh, questions from the audience, if anyone has any kind of, anything? Any questions? No? Any questions? Yeah. I'll come down to you, hold on. Can I go down, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Would you say that there's a particularly good age to go into this? Like, is there a time that's too young or too old? Okay, the business is swamped with these young lads and young girls coming out of drama schools, and their average is 20 to 30. And that's where all, you look at the movies nowadays, it's all 20 to 30 year olds, it's all kids, right? I normally find, uh, sometimes actresses or ladies coming forward who have like reared their families and want to go back into the business. And, and they're kind of very inhibited and very kind of whatever. And I say, no, 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 no. You have lived, you have your life. And the self, you know, in for a man as well, right? Your life is in your face, your life is in here. That's what you can draw upon. When you're 20 and 30 years old, you don't know anything yet, okay? I think. But the fun begins uh, in your 50s and 60s or 40s, 50s, 60s. So what I'm saying to you is you have a bit of life. You have a bit of life experience. You have a bit of character in your face. You have lived. And that's what you're using because you're using yourself all the time. And especially on film, the camera can do amazing things and go right in there, okay? If there's nothing, if lights on, nobody home, you're dead in the water. But if you have an inner life and an outer life and your very body is a, a kind of a, a mirror of your life, that's great, you know? Um, now, there is, probably would be less parts as you get older. I remember an actor, famous actor, describing uh, his career as a pyramid. And when you start off at the bottom base, there's loads of work. The higher you go up the pyramid, the parts become less and less and less. Granddads, dads, <laughs> that kind of stuff. Um, although I was watching Breaking Bad recently, there's lots of great character actors in that. Uh, so that gave me great hope and great confidence. I think I just shave the head and just get on with it. It's great. Anybody else? Happy? Happy? Happy. Okay. Well, thank you for coming along today. Hope you enjoy that. I'll be hanging around. I'm on the stand over there for Sally Noggin College. If you have any questions you think about later on, please uh, don't hesitate. And uh, I'll see you when I see you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.